Well, guys, it's I Can't Think of a Pun That Hasn't Been Overused Tober, and you know what that means. Thanksgiving content. Wait, no, most of you are American. I guess that means it's time for my contractually obligated YouTuber Halloween special. Well, I say special, but it's more me dissecting an OP I was planning to get to anyway, because both it and the show it's part of are great. Shiki is one of my top three horror anime, an all-time classic, and if you're looking for something to make you break out in a cold sweat, you should definitely give it a watch. Every episode of Shiki opens cold, with a few quick tense scenes to ratchet up the suspense before we freeze frame over some grisly image and a creepy music box starts playing. As a little porcelain effigy of Sunako Kurashiki dances around, we cut to an erratic color-negative shot of an old European mansion, the house that her family had built before moving to Sotaba. She erupts into a whirlwind, a motif that will crop up later, which brings us to a tangle of pulsing veins that flow into Chizuru Kirishiki's hair. The camera spins around the principal cast, and when it cycles back to where Chizuru should be, we see a spooky, scary skeleton in her place. This is a not very subtle way of showing that she's a vampire. The OP is pretty brash about telling you more or less exactly who's going to die and how using these skeletons as symbols, because it's confident the show can scare the bejesus out of you either way. For example, a torrent of blood brings us down to Natsuno Yuki, our hero if you can call him that, as his eyes are open to the truth of what's going on with the Kirishikis, but no sooner does he become aware than his humanity is stripped away from him. Interestingly, this happens in the full light of the sun, hinting that Natsuno is fated to become a Jinro, a special Shiki that still has a pulse and can walk in daylight. We then see Sunako walking in the darkness with her followers behind her. In front, her silhouette apparently moves to kiss an older gentleman. It's a bit hard to tell who it is, but I think from the context that it's the nobleman who turned her over a century ago. In line with that kiss, theme, which also crops up in the lyrics of the song, Chizuru's lips part to swallow us up, and inside we see more erratic shots of a country road running beneath our feet. As the sky turns blood red, we fly past a number of the series' characters, all of whom seem to react to our presence with fear or disdain. We literally come between Toru and Natsuno, which perhaps implicates us in the tragedy we're about to watch unfold. Those who've seen Shiki through to the end know that the series has a bit of a bone to pick with its viewers about their enjoyment of gory bloodbaths, and this appears to re enforce that attitude. At the end of the line we find Sunako, who once again dissolves into the air. These shots make us associate her and the rest of the Shiki with a force of nature, like a tornado or a plague, which is the lie that the series tells us early on before showing us their human side. This is matched with an image of a dove, a peaceful, innocent symbol, being plucked from its flock and violently transformed into a crow. The concept of corruption immediately springs to mind from this beautiful bit of animation, but it also suggests an inversion of the norm. One can't help feeling a little sorry for the lonely bird despite its new frightening appearance, and indeed, we're supposed to identify with the Shiki by the end of the story. Drops of blood begin to fill up the red moon, which is imposed against Natsuno's eye to once again foreshadow his transformation into a Shiki. The half-empty moon speaks to the Shiki's nocturnal nature and unquenchable thirst for blood. Megumi's eye overlaps with Natsuno's briefly, drawing a connection between them and implying that she might pose a danger to him as his vampiric stalker, but as we pull out further, she's replaced by Toru, the Shiki who eventually kills Natsuno despite being his best friend. In front of his temple, the monk Seishin offers his hand to Sunako, but it's Chizuru, who represents the more predatory and unrestrained aspects of the Shiki, who turns in response. Under her gaze, Seishin, suddenly inside the mansion instead of the temple, resigns himself to his fate and is killed, mirroring what happens to him toward the end of the series. Megumi's life is also taken, and what appears to be her and Seishin's essence wraps around Sunako, who, despite being framed in a very ominous way, is gesturing as though she wants to embrace them. This essence, which can be seen earlier in the OP rising up in a cloud above the mansion, emanates from Ritsuko and Toru and everyone else who turns as well, except for Natsuno, who never joins the rest of the vampires. The unique colors of each skeleton and the essence flowing off them reflect that they do retain their identities after death. Clever framing even gives the skeletons a bit of personality. Seishin's face is resolute and morose, Megami appears to be smiling, and Ritsuko and Toru both show expressions of dismay after turning. The trees, which are used to make grave markers and coffins, and thus symbolize death, are seen coursing with blood, and between them walks Toshio with a sinister shadow beside him. This is his dark side, the propensity for violence and cruelty that comes out as he investigates the Shiki, and this close-up with glowing blue eyes shows that he's embraced it. Seishiro Kirishiki spins with a flamboyant and weirdly magnanimous gesture. The music here is intense and the rest of the imagery is pretty frightening, but he stands without a hint of malice on his face, genuinely enthused and welcoming to the viewer. Beneath his innocent white outer layer, his clothes 
those are all blood red, so his barely hidden allegiance with the Shiki is pretty clear, but layered under the red is more white, showing that the way he presents himself is authentic. Though a bit of a showman and a little too comfortable amid all the carnage, Seishiro is very clearly not a bad guy. Meanwhile, the OP paints the villagers in an increasingly negative light. Toshio, Seishin, Toru, Maso, Ritsuko, and finally Tatsumi are shown in stained glass, evoking the church where Sunako and Seishin frequently meet. Once we reach the end of the line, we pull back quickly to see that Toshio is glaring directly at Tatsumi, though everyone else is also in his eyeline. This makes sense given that the rest of the characters in the lineup all become Shiki, and Toshio has a single-minded focus on destroying them. This is perhaps the single most unnerving shot in the entire OP, a group of shadowy figures lurking in the woods with glowing, animalistic eyes, and they're all human. A few become Shiki later, but the hospital staff is shown here to have their monstrous side even as people, as is the rest of the village toward the end of the series. We pan up for further foreshadowing of the show's climactic slaughter as literal fountains of blood erupt from the treetops above them. Natsuno stands with his investigation partners, Akira and Kaori, and together they catch the very dangerous attention of Tatsumi and Megumi. Natsuno is the only one that moves, hinting that his friends will be spared his grisly fate. The apparent leader of the Shiki Chizuru turns and is replaced with Sunako, their true leader, spinning in her idyllic little snow globe. This represents the world she wants, where she and her vampire family can be happy and safe, but the looming specter of death overwhelms the fantasy image. Natsuno is tossed around by some unseen entity, representing the unknown forces he has to contend with in the series, and falls forward with a blank expression on his face. This is probably his death at the hands of the Shiki. The very last shot of the OP is incredible and evocative. The Kirishiki mansion looms in the distance, with a rain of blood falling all around it, and in the foreground, in time with the chimes of the music, droplets fall on and illuminate an old, discarded skull. It's a desolate and eerie image, a clear sign that much death awaits, but whose death it foretells is a little ambiguous. The music box notes, coupled with the mansion in the background, force a contrast with Sunako's idyllic snow globe fantasy, and at the end of the series, it is indeed the vampires who are killed and left to be forgotten. Or maybe it's just meant to be spooky. Either way, it really works and makes you want to see what will happen next. Speaking of what's happening next, next week I'll be doing one more special Halloween episode of What's in an OP, this one covering the recent horror hit School Live, because I know you guys are going to keep asking if I don't. If you want to catch that or anything else I make in the future, be sure to hit subscribe and follow me on Facebook and Twitter for regular updates. I host any videos that get taken down by false copyright claims on my Facebook page too, so that's a good place to check if you can't find something on my channel. To celebrate part four of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure being confirmed, and because vampires, today's highlight is once again my JoJo breakdown, so give that a watch if you somehow haven't already. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up and leave a comment. As always, this is Jeff Thu, Professional Shitbag, signing out from my mother's dungeon. Ooh, spooky!